The current inflation in the U.S. is between 8 and 12 percent per year, according to John Williams. This means that about 50 percent of your savings, pensions, and income have been stolen over the past five years and transferred to a ruling cabal of thieves, crooks, scumbags, and degenerates of this world. Everything is rigged, and the Western world is now built on endemic lies as far as the eye can see. Truth and morality have been purged from America by the vilest and evil people on earth. The fake government statistics and the high stock market prices convince the sheeple that everything is okay. Even the consumer inflation data is bollocks. They consider useless discretionary crap like biotech and tobacco. I don't buy biotech or tobacco. I buy food and pay for a residence. You know the things that are increasing much faster than the official rate of inflation. That should be the only thing in the core CPI, food, and houses. Inflation is everywhere if you just bother to look. My health care is up 9% this year alone. It is eating away at my take-home pay and making me and my family poorer. Grocery prices are also rising each year. And my state and local taxes keep going up. On and on, I could go. If they're trying to hide it, they aren't doing a very good job at the grocery stores and gas stations. By the way, there are only 30 corporations stocks that make up the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and they ain't very industrial anymore. Only two and a half years ago, the market, along with unemployment and inflation numbers, were all fake, according to candidate Trump. Somehow after the tweeter-in-chief took over in January 2017, they all became real. The writing was on the wall when he immediately pulled a 180 move from candidate Trump and started applauding the stock market's gains. He turned into another one of them. It would have been no different if Hillary was president, minus some of the illegal immigrant theater. And some still think that Trump gives one damn about the middle class. Welcome to the Atlantis report. The Fed must lie about real inflation. If they admit that real inflation is over 5%, then it takes 10 years to inflate away half of your wealth. People who think they are going to retire are going to have a severe wake-up call. The real inflation of all the money created after 2008 is just now coming home to roost, and that isn't even counting all the offshore dollars from the petrodollar. As other countries use other currencies, those dollars will come home as well. Inflation in the next 20 years will be crushing. Learn to grow a garden. A big garden. And buy some silver and gold. Anything that will maintain its value. The storm is in the mail. If bread goes up in price, it is taken out of the family basket of weekly essentials, and replaced with something which has gone down, like out-of-season cruise ship prices. It backquote's not only the stock exchanges that are manipulated. Unemployment figures are also a joke, not counting the tens of millions of Americans who have stopped looking, and the tens of millions more who have to work multiple jobs to keep their heads barely above water. The United States has the worst wealth concentration in the developed world, by far, and it is getting worse and worse. With that reality, that $2.2 trillion Trump Republican tax gift to corporations and the rich was an abomination, which will come back to haunt the greedy wealthy. Let them eat cake always ends badly. When the politicians realized they could have more play money in the budget by leaning on the statisticians to understate CPI, that measure became worthless as a measure of inflation. These are the massive discrepancies in what the Fed is saying happens and what really happens with trillions of QE printed and dispersed. The little man standing behind the curtain in the final scenes of The Wizard of Oz is probably the most accurate presentation of what the Fed is doing. It's a scam, but the only difference is that you can't click your heels three times and go home. They're taking us all for the ride, and in that, we have no choice. I think about inflation as having to work harder, longer, and smarter to get less stuff than I used to get when I worked less and dumber. Based on that, I'd say there's been about 10% inflation compounded downward annually for quite a few years now. Inflation is directly proportional to the money that is produced out of thin air within a fractional reserve banking system. No other result is ultimately possible. Inflation is a slow robbery that does two things. It devalues savings and inflates asset prices, forcing people to spend and gamble. It stimulates consumption. On a planet where everything is finite. Inflation completely warps supply and demand and, over time, leads to shortages of essentials and overproduction of garbage. Inflation exists as one of many wealth transfer mechanisms. It's a casino where some do win, but only at the expense of someone else losing. 
And of course, the parasite institutions get to collect a convenience fee for doing God's work. Supposedly taxes are collected for the privilege of us using the Fed's money. Yet somehow even transactions not involving fiat are taxed equally. Even if you barter, you supposed to pay taxes issued in the currency that was nowhere near during the exchange. I mean, come on. We all know that the foundation of the modern economy rests on lies upon lies. Instead of maintaining equilibrium, inflation favors growth. When growth stops, everything collapses. Money vanishes, and only assets remain. All the collateral pledged goes back to the bank when they yank the carpet. That's what it's all about. The game auto terminates when the bank owns everything there is, and in over 100 years of Fed's existence, we're almost there. It's by design. The dollar is backed by paper and ink. It is being overvalued from the beginning. The market will correct it. Eventually, when the dollar reaches the true value of the paper and ink it is made of, then the dollar will become stable until the paper and ink wars start. The US dollar bought 100 cents worth of stuff in 1913. Today, the US dollar buys between 3 and 4 cents worth. The majority of sheep in America have no idea of the truth. That is, today, the US dollar is just a piece of paper with ink on it. It is a con game run by the bankers. The con stands for confidence. When that is gone, it will be Germany in 1922 here in America. The Fed is not creating money. It is creating the currency, i.e., debt and debt, is slavery. Nobody can create money, i.e., gold, there's a finite amount, and when it's gone, it's gone. When the US dollar and all other currencies collapse, gold's true value will be revealed, and at that price, it'll be unaffordable for 99.99999% of the world's population. The response to the 2008 crisis was not a public works campaign like in 1932, which injected money into the broader economy by putting people to work and paying wages. Instead of the asset purchases, interest rate suppression, bailouts, and regulatory largesse strictly benefited corporations and the banking sector. The money is essentially firewalled off in a small part of the economy, benefiting only the so-called 1%. As a result, M2 velocity is at a historic low. There are no channels for it to flow to the general economy to benefit the populace. Neither does it circulate in the economy, so a portion can be taxed and used by the public sector to provide service and repair infrastructure. This has been going on literally since Fed creation in 1913, shifted into high gear when Nixon closed the gold window in 1971 and is now balls to the wall to fend off QE side effects like recession, deflation, and to discount federal debt. Obviously, if the public had any real notion of why this was happening and what it was really doing to them, there would be tires burning in every intersection. The great inflation must be done on the QT, hence, PSYOP low CPI. Imagine a world where the dollar remained pegged to gold. Since Nixon left the gold standard, the dollar has lost three quarters of its purchasing power. The peg would probably have been moved a few times, but even if the dollar had been devalued by 500%, it would still have 8 or 9 times the purchasing power it has today. The process of inflation strips the dollar of the value it had when we earned it, and transfers these gains to the first users of the new dollars. Spoiler alert, that group is a big club, and we ain't in it. Every day, everything 99% of folks use has gone through the roof in the past 20 years. Couple the price hikes with reduced quantities per unit hides, or so the idiots in power think it does, from the uninformed consumer. Thank goodness that they have not been shrinking package sizes to try and hide it from the consumer. Seriously, when this economy crashes, there's going to be some serious bullseyes on folks back that have been lying to the people for so long. Feeling inflation depends on your income bracket and class. If you are a billionaire, corporate director, a rich banker or hedge fund manager fitting the 1% rich class that have more assets than the lower 90% of the population of course for those inflation is never a felt problem while living under subsidized QE helicopter money and artificial asset bubbles. Not to mention if one is a Harvard economics professor that writes the inflation algorithms to report inflation. But, if you fit the lower 90% class. Inflation is there and felt through food price, rent, gas, real estate, medical, stamps, etc. Plus not to mention the never-ending stationary service growing monthly fees that persist the system. Taxes and insurance burden. We are the frogs slowly being boiled alive. 
people on fixed incomes have been eviscerated over the past 30 years. It breaks my heart to see old people suffering while the piggish public servants and other protected groups live the high life. Also, you may notice that .gov has stopped boasting about public service compensations. Yeah, well, if you get a chance to look at some compensation packages of our dearly beloved public servants, you will see that they are making way more than the private sector equivalents. We have a government that we can no longer afford, and they are lying through their teeth to us. The CPI is estimated by government employees. Do you expect accuracy? Between vacation and lunch breaks, there is no time in their busy schedules actually to work. I don't know about the rest of you, but it's getting mighty hot in my neck of the woods. It is a rigged system. Rob Peter to pay Paul. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.